What are some ways that Filipino food can be more popular in the United States and is it gaining popularity right now? We're here with Filipino comedian and foodie Marcus Cardona to find out. Boo, 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 boo. Hey, what's up? Yo, can you please prove your validity to speak on this topic? Kanin tayo, masarap ang Filipino food. Ah, uh, and you are a former nurse, you're a comedian right now, but you also what? We're in the food game a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I feel like I'm always floating in the food game. I'm at restaurants. I'm, I'm schmoozing with people. I'm, I'm walking through kitchens. It's fine. So I think <laughs> that Filipino food is going through a renaissance in the past five years because I just looked it up. And there are so many new hipster elevated Filipino spots of different varieties opening up in Andrew, Seattle, mm. L.A., wow. the Bay Area, Boom. New York, Whoa. all across America. But David, why does it have to be elevated? Why can't it be traditional? So I, 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 I approve of the accent. It's fine. It was, I mean, it was decent, right? Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, no, but let's talk about it because we we all love food. We're all food lovers here. I'm um, very interested in Filipino food, eating it a lot growing up. But like, I want to know, like, because there's not a lot of Filipino restaurants for the amount of Filipinos in America. This is statistically speaking. So statistically speaking, Filipino food is not that popular. But let's talk about maybe why that is. But also, what are some just suggestions? Because you got some ideas, Marcus. You, Mark, you could be the Marcus Garvey of <laughs> Filipino food. Marcus Garvey of Filipino food. What's up? You heard So here. make sure you like, subscribe, and turn in your notifications. But on any type of food, Andrew, you can put Smala on it. Try Smala, guys. It goes great on Filipino food as well. But yeah, check it out. Smala sauce. All right. What do you think of all the elevated spots that have opened up across America in the past five years? I'm sure you've been to, what, at least 10, 20 of them? Yep. Um, with the elevated Filipino food, I think that the hardest thing is just the fact of trying to stick to the core, but also like who the audience is, because again, we're trying to break Filipino food out and we're trying to get like a big name, like Bourdain or someone else to like endorse it because we have like, we have hip hop stars. We have like sweetie, like being like, I love Filipino food. We have like Pilo going on food tours and whatnot. And we have celebrity Filipino chefs, but it's about getting like audience and like, you know, clients to like who go to the restaurant to be like, Yo, Filipino food's the next thing. Right, to make Filipino food consumption a more regular part of their consumption pattern, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and you, th that being said, are you pro-elevated spot, $20 longanisas, or $20, uh, you know, dollar hit skewers, or you're against it, or you're 50-50? Uh, I'd say I'm 50-50, for sure. Like, no matter what, I want, I do enjoy, like... More money that goes to Filipino food goes back to Filipinos. So I'm just like, yeah, what's up? Especially if the chefs are Filipino. Um, but at the same time, I do want to see, like, I want to hear, like, white girls on the subway just being like, yo, so I tried this Kinalao recipe the other day. And, like, that's, <laughs> like, it. Like, that's, like, the breakthrough where it needs to cross over into the mainstream. It, is, Williamsburg, but, but is Williamsburg picking it up or not yet? Not yet, yeah. man. I'm just, like, out there. I'm, like, I'm just going to start, like, like like littering like recipes maybe it could be <laughs> maybe maybe it's gonna start more as a bushwick thing i don't know so yeah. you're more going for volume of penetration versus like being like oh my god i had a 38 dollar adobo the other day it was delicious yeah yeah, yeah. people yeah people you can you can pack out restaurants but i want to see like someone's apartment and they just have lumpia like and i'm like who made this i'm just like not the philippine i'm like yo you, <laughs> you, you want to see trader joe's do lumpia <laughs> yeah that, that could be possible i feel like i feel like you know girls have been eating the longanisa before they you've been eating the longanisa if you know what i'm saying like they've been on filipino <laughs> food uh, you know guys dudes before food y'all been on they've True. been on filipino dudes before food but anyways uh <laughs> let's let's talk about certain things that that filipinos are killing it at right now and uh obviously ube everywhere ube mm. is like the yep. ingredient every dessert spot has a ube every i mean ethnic sorry like asian Asian -y, even if it's an East Asian dessert spot, they have ube. Like it's it's killing it. The ube color is dope, but the flavor could be stronger. For sure, dude. I I, I believe that ube is like a state of mind, especially. <laughs> 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 Yo, ube state of mind, is especially crazy. especially when you're at like the boba spots and you're like, is this ube or taro? I'm like, I can't tell anymore. <laughs> no, it's true that the two roots. Don't taste that different. Yeah, yeah. purple yam. I mean, kind of like a purple yam. It's pretty similar. Anyways. Um, does banana ketchup have a shot I think or, or is it cause it's kind of like a sweet ketchup you're thing. talking about Jew friends yeah Jew, Jew friends, friends banana ketchup does it have a shot at going mainstream mainstream or, or what do you think 
I think, it, yeah, I think it definitely has a spot going mainstream. We just need to tap into, like, the vegan market, and we need to push, like, bananas harder. We need to be like, hey, if you eat, you could eat regular ketchup, or you can eat this banana ketchup and get more potassium or something Ooh. like that. <laughs> we got to market through It's like that. a potassium-enriched ketchup already. So other things that I really like from the Filipinos uh, that I think should be more popular is the kanji. But the, here's the thing about kanji, right? Kanji in itself is just not a popular dish. Like, that's not a cool dish that you want to eat at the restaurant when you're with your friends. Yeah. Right. But, but Filipino kanji is lit. Yeah. Arascaldo, Lugao, both those are great. Like one sloppier, one's that, but we were talking about it earlier where, uh, it's just, it just seems like slop because like when it gets plated, it still comes out like a giant, like, no, no you, know how you, you know how you combat that as a modern chef in 2024, just a little plant. Just put the oh, yeah. put, put, put microgreens all, <laughs> all the microgreens no. on the plant, and then you have to use the tweezers to lay it down, and then uh, it must be tweezed on. That's yeah. But but kanji always does remind me of uh, what um, Little Red Riding Hood or who's eating uh, the, the kanji. porridge. The porridge. <laughs> That's how it feels. It's just I, like porridge. I got a hot take. Filipino kanji is my favorite version of kanji. Mm. Ooh, I, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Not wrong. I think I think lumpia arguably the best egg roll. I think it's I think Viet egg roll gives it a run for its money, so I might take the Viet egg roll, but it's close. Lumpia's yeah. close. So lumpia egg roll, everybody loves egg rolls, so that's that's going more mainstream. I see people there's like a Lucia's egg roll out in Seattle. They I mean, sorry, Lucia's lumpia out of Seattle. They're like just a lumpia spot. Filipino Hawaiian breakfast spots. You, that's that's a genre um, you've seen also yeah. proliferate in the past what, five ten years. Yeah, the the combination. Yeah, you can get some. Uh, what's the what's the loco moco? You can get mm. the loco moco alongside like a topsilog or anything like that. Any of the breakfasts, because uh, garlic rice can be the base for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah garlic rice is really good. What, can Filipino food be a breakfast food, like a legit breakfast food in 2024? What do you think? In 2024, um, yeah, if you're trying to involve more meats uh, and like <laughs> fish, because I think that b fish for breakfast and meats, especially like sausages, I'm like, we should have like just instead of Indians like taking over England, we should have been there, but it's fine. Because um, <laughs> we, got, we, we got sausages, uh, but I'd say that it's just how much meat do you want to have in your breakfast? Because yeah, we got the egg. We got the crispy egg, the same Thai crispy egg that you like with the with the edges. We got that. We got the garlic rice. But it's like just depending on what meat you want to go with. Sausage, mm. beef, or fish. Seasick spots. I've been seeing a lot of seasick elevated, you know, more hipster looking, 2024 looking seasick spots pop up. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. Um, some seasick. I'm happy that it's still going because we're all coasting off the ghost of Anthony Bourdain with seasick. He gave, <laughs> he gave, he gave seasick no. the gas and we're just running with it as long as possible. You, you know what the strength of seasick though is? And I'm not going to lie. It's not my favorite Filipino dish. Yep. I don't love it, but the presentation is cool too. Cause not, not that many other Filipino dishes in my Experience come on the grill plate. Oh yeah, and you, sizzling. Where it's, yeah, people love sizzling things. Yeah, fajitas. Yo, forget about it. Seasick when it came out on the yo, cast iron. Seasick fajitas. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. That could be the push. <laughs> these four dollar spots. Trust Bay, Ox and Tiger in San Francisco. We're talking about like potentially the bill per person is like one seventy five if you dr have drinks. What, are you buying take? it? Are you buying the the? Are you the, going with the price point for seventy five drinks? I'm like, yo, who who's there? What celebrities? <laughs> like, that's kind of it. It's 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 like a social flex, but like honestly, I mean, this is like more expensive than a lot of restaurants in the Philippines. Yeah, right? yeah. it's hard to spend two hundred on a meal in yeah. the Philippines. Right? Yeah, I'd say that's like the big thing that's hard also with elevated dining because like I've had good food on like a nice plate, but also at the same time, some of the best like Filipino spots I've gone to, they're like uh, Tita's name. It's like Gloria's, and it's her, like served in like a metal sheet tray, like a lunch style. Right. And it's hard when you've eaten good at that price point, and then you have to like justify like, well, this is a smaller portion, and mm. it's like a little bit of the taste. <laughs> Are you spending twenty dollars on this on this fig slice? With the fig slice, oh, bro, ah, dude, it's like, dude, I, I feel like the meme. I'm like, yeah, we got figs at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. All right. So I do want to get into. I, I think that uh, I want to get into like brainstorming some suggestions on on ideas because you got some interesting ideas for Filipino food. Let's talk about those. What is your number one idea that you think could pop that more people hasn't should do? Hasn't been done yet. That, that hasn't has been not done. been done yet. Or because even uh, shout out to Flip Siggy, they're doing what? Longanisa burritos and things like that. Yeah. Uh, 
American, Western, Tex-Mex, but with Filipino, right? But you have got an idea that nobody got right now. Yeah, so I think that right now everyone knows, like, you know, sandwiches all over. And I think Asian, like, dining has also crossed over. Like, the banh mi, that's been super popular for years. But recently, like, the Thai scallion uh, sandwiches that have been crossing over in the breakfast sandwich, like, with eggs and sausages, have been crossing over. You're talking about with the Thai sausage in it? Yeah, with the Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been in there. Um, I think, yeah, Filipinos, we got to figure out a sandwich that is, like, marketable, mm. like, overall. Because I think that we have so many good flavors. Is and it an ube bun? Or you're wait. like, no, 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 we can't do the <sighs> ube bun. No, nah, dude, they, they have a, they have a there's, a, there's a place called Pogi Boys in D.C. They got an ube burger, and it made the cover. It was purple. Purple yeah. sandwich um, and everything but, but, like that. It, okay, so describe to me the sandwich. Is it using slices of bread? Is it using a baguette, like a bun me? I feel like the baguette's not a bad move because you could always do like a Filipino oh. bun me. Yeah, you, know, you haven't seen this? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I didn't even know it was like that. It's like super purple, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yo, okay, so is this is this the way to go, or you think you know? Obviously, your average American they probably can't get down with the yeah, one, right? I, I th- yeah. I think we need to, I think we need to figure out like the the sandwich choice because I'm like we we were doing we we're making progress with burritos, but at the same time everyone's like, oh, that's Latino. Like everyone's just like, oh, it's just a burrito filled. But I'm like, we need to make our own like unique sandwich. Mm. I think that that's gonna be the big game changer, especially with like all the pickle. Like again, the banh mi has like pickled like ingredients. Like some kind of like braised meat with like a pickled like mm. vegetable in there. I have been still a proponent, and this is my perspective on it, of a chain from the Philippines like Mang Inasal, which is owned by Jollibee's group, or I don't know if they bought it out or they created it, serving lumpia, Mang Inasal, which is the, the chicken thigh chicken. with the lemongrass, right? And um, just those two things. What do you think of that? And that that could break open the market because everybody can be like, yo, I grew up eating mong in a sol, but, but it needs to be rebranded as like chicken thigh, Filipino chicken thigh, and then lumpia. At, and I'm talking about like at a ton of spots around America. Yeah. No, I, I definitely think that that's like a specific market that could have hit like a couple of years ago, like way back in the day. But now, like, I feel like everything is like, you can adjust everything on a menu. Like there's like a certain catering for like the food market that you're tapping into now, where it's just like every like little part needs to be like customizable. What, and, like, what, what, what are the parts that should be customizable to localize Filipino food to different markets? So for Lumpia, I think that you just need to have all the options. Cause like we've talked about a little bit about how people are like, Oh, everyone makes Lumpia differently. And like different, like, you know, provinces have certain things, but I think is having options of one, uh, just base flavor, but also like, ingredients which is like what's the protein because is it mm. meat is there vegetable is there tofu is it okay to do a cheeseburger lumpia with a cheese dip <laughs> is that a violation or does it have to be lumpia is that, is, is, or, or what a- is that is that a red flag i know i've had i've had lumpia with cheese in it and i'm gonna be honest it did disappoint but i could like if you execute it right i'd be fine with it i feel like that's oh fine God. all right so marcus got the p- burger endorse. idea oh, the, sandwich. I, I, the yeah. sandwich idea i got my idea, which is uh, just, you know, rock with, rock, rock, rock with some chains from Asia, but just like change the marketing all around. Yeah. Andrew, I think what you got? Filipinos, I feel like the longanisa as a sausage has a shot because it's be sweet, even right? more popular. It's sweet. So I, th- I think you could put it in a, in a breakfast sandwich or something like that. Definitely. I think that that Filipino breakfast sandwich could be trending more. One thing I would say is maybe. Oh, longanisa glizzies. <laughs> <laughs> Cream cheese long anisa glizzies. Long, yes. long, longer glizzies. <laughs> La glizzies. Um, I would say maybe like a like a noodle soup. I'm like adding noodles to a syn- uh, synagogue, maybe. You know, because synagogue is a is a good soup, and it's kind of picking up a little bit more in popularity. But I don't know. Is it wrong to put noodles in it? Egg noodles? I don't know. I think that would be cool because Filipinos they don't really have a, a popular noodle soup. I don't know. People like noodle soups, like pho. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I Just an idea. That's, that's a hot take. Yes, yeah, a hot, hot take. take. You know what? All right. All right. Other hot take. Add some spice. Filipino food is not spicy at its True. core. Let's be honest. I don't see a lot of red chilies and it's the, the, the chilies are not usually infused in. So that's what I think should happen. Because I'm like looking at Thai food. Thai food is amazing. And I do think you got to take some cues from Thai people because their food is killing it. Yeah, Thai people taking over. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to your favorite. Oh, yeah. Talk about how much you like Thai food, though. Because just just to 
like piggyback oh. off the the Filipino. Do, food. Okay, do I love do I love Thai food? I like Thai food because it may like white people are hype about it, so that's why I like Thai food. But Thai food, I think you want to be the Thai food of Asian Canadians. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? You would <laughs> like to have ca- ca- that kind of appeal. kind of you know, Thai, you know, white people love Thai food. That's uh, at some point now it's going to cross over and like Thai food's just a white person thing. Mm. Um, but no, Thai food. I think that they've introduced like a lot of like more like they've definitely pushed like a combination of flavors. They've definitely crossed it over with like seafood and like other meats mixing. Cause I mm. think that's like the big barrier. Um, but also, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you guys now, Jow is going to take over everything for sauces. That sauce is going to be everywhere. Oh, J A E W. Yeah. Yeah. It's yep. a strong Jow. sauce, man. Yep. What, what do you think about the challenge foods that Filipinos have kind of like the balut and the dinuguan? Yeah. Where do you think that kind of promoting those sometimes puts people off of Filipino food because when they think of Filipino food, now they're thinking, oh, balut? What, you guys only eat the, the fertilized duck egg? And you're like, no, 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 that's just part of it. But <laughs> should you guys still promote it? Yeah, I think I think that that should be like one of the like secret menu items. We shouldn't like have it printed on the menu. Like you have to ask for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it is weird because like literally it's, that's that's the challenge food. It was a challenge on Joe Rogue or on Fear Factor. Um, and it, it does kind of like set people back because they're like, oh, if they're willing to eat this texture, then like what uh, what other things are off limits? Right. And I think I definitely think it like hurts um, when having it on a menu. Dang. But at the same time, yo, challenge challenge the real ones. Like have that as like a late night. You have to be there at like a certain amount of hours, and then you can order only order at this time and be like, oh no, that guy's a real one. And should then- every <laughs> Filipino parent before a non Asian marries into the family, they should have them eat the balut. I feel like, like the- oh, you want to marry my daughter? You have to <laughs> eat three balloons. <laughs> I definitely think it's. I definitely think it's a weird like challenge. It's like, it's like you just want to see if they're down for the culture, and that's the most down you can be besides uh, marrying someone. Right. <laughs> Real quick, Filipino bakeries. We got Cora Hoods, famous in Seattle. Every city got ube cookies, ube donuts, calamansi this, calamansi that. Yep, dude. Filipino bakeries have all like Loki always been on the top. That they're the reason why ube is so popular. They're the reason why pandesal like it gets brought up as like a, its own bread category. Mm. Like and like Nick, no matter what, like Asian bakeries are there, but like there is something comforting because it's always titas who are working there about. <laughs> It, Yo, Filipino bakeries. Other, other Asian bakeries such as like a Paris baguette using ube. Are you? It's cool. Um, I'd they be, get the I'd, pass. I'd, 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 be, I'd be cool. Again, you got to just like know like the recipe. But if you made a if you made a baguette with ube, yeah, send me like five giant like purple like logs. Like send that to me because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if you use ube, I need it to look like you killed Barney and just send you, me parts. You know what I had was fire was the red ribbon. I think it was red ribbon empanada. Yeah, the Filipino empanada. Oh, you thought it was the one with the raisins in it? Yeah, yep, the yep, raisins yep. in the empanada. Because yeah, this now this is new. We're talking about the Spanish side, but this is something I think. Well, it's hard to say because every a lot of different countries have their empanadas, right? So, uh, but yeah, the Filipino empanada is underrated for sure. Yeah, shout out your favorite modern Filipino spot, and then maybe just one old school spot, the yeah. Tita spot, and then you know the oh. young cool <laughs> hipster. Everybody's wearing ALD, whatever, whatever <laughs> spot. Um. Okay. So, uh, for the hipster ones that are currently in place, is going to be. Uh, Probably it's gonna be probably be Cabecera. Cabecera is great. Like they definitely yep. have like their crossovers. They're definitely trying out some uh, <laughs> Filipino ramens. I know that, and I like definitely was like, oh, you should try this. But I think that they've definitely been there in terms of like making sure that even the coffee has like ube in it. Like the ube latte is popping off right now, and I'm like, they're always like in like the realm of like old school and new school. Um, I don't think this place is open anymore, but. It was uh, Tita Gloria's in Queens. That used to be a spot. Uh, and that was, again, that was the steam tray. Like, I was like, I got flirted with every time I was there. I tipped way more than I should have. Uh, but it was fine. And again, like that place, like customer service, fine. But food ripped. So I didn't care about customer service. And then uh, I'd say for upcoming uh spots like the one that like leading ones right now and it was mentioned in the bear on fx kasama in chicago kasama mm. is like i think that they yeah yeah they're they're definitely like it to get us in the in the foodie world more um and i think that they are definitely like figuring out what we should be doing um i'll go there one time and then- <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, for me, I'm going to go with Google Room in New York for my elevated pick. I yep. recently had uh, a Rose Caldo there. Crazy. was the best kanji I ever had in my life. And then for my old school spot, I would pick um, Erwan. Erwan, yeah. In, in uh, Woodside. Or just in general, uh, I had in LA, Max's. Ooh, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I don't want to pick a, a, a chain, but... Yeah, no, 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 yo, Ma- yo, Filipinos, no, no fried chicken. If you guys don't, if you guys are on Jollibee, lo- learn about Max's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, that's my Andrew. Do you have a, an elevated and then a home style pick? Um, I think I do like Cabacera. I think actually, there. Uh, anytime somebody asks me about like, oh, I need to do catering for my office or this work event, I'm like, yo, you should get lumpias from. Cabacero, those Olympios are really good. I think they're my favorite in New York area, at least Manhattan. Um, and then, uh, man, we went to oh, Queens. Spoon and Pork. Oh, Spoon and Pork's pretty. Oh, Spoon and Pork in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're good. That's <laughs> elevated. So shout out to them. That's really good. Um, I'm a, I'll, I'll pick those two. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure, for so, sure. Well, anyway, guys, let us know what you think about our Filipino food fo- uh, talk in the comments section below. I think. The biggest question for me is like, are you guys going to the spots where it's like seventy, eighty, ninety dollars a person yeah. for Filipino food? Yeah, and well, also, do, I, do your seventy, eighty dollars spots have uh, balut? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna say this: Filipinos known to be very hospitable people, and I think like that means you. I mean, you could sell people on the service too because you know the hospitable. Like, yeah. Well, I don't know. What if you had a, a restaurant with like a, a nurse theme? I'm just. <laughs> I'm Man. playing. And we need to call you bossing when you come in. <laughs> ma'am, sir. Ma'am, sir. Ma'am, sir. <laughs> if Trader Joe's releases <clears throat> the, the, the cold meal of the manga in a saw with the side of garlic rice or lumpia Shanghai in a bag, it's going bananas. No, I don't doubt bonkers. them. Don't doubt it's that they don't bonkers. already have it. I know they have a ube ice cream. Uh, yeah, they got ube everything. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, let us know what you think about this video in the comments down below. We were just having a fun conversation about Filipino food. How can it be more popular? It is gaining traction. It is gaining more popularity. Are you going to the expensive elevated spots? Let us know. Shout out to Marcus. Uh, Check out his stuff down below. He's a comedian, but also a foodie. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.